If you want to draw something but can't live without an undo button, the number of digital options available these days is staggering. You can take simple handwritten notes with your finger on your mobile phone, or you can buy a Wacom pen display with a laminated screen and stylus for over three grand. But no matter how far we push the technology, stubborn digital artists just refuse to let go of one thing the good old-fashioned keyboard. Torbox Tech, however, thinks that we can do so much better. Introducing the Torbox Neo. If the first thing you thought when you saw this device was, OMG, that's exactly the sort of thing I need, you're not alone. Companies have been trying to give us devices with a scroll dial or some sort of knob on it for the longest time, but they've just never been able to get it quite right. Often it was like a giant jog dial with multiple selectable modes, but ultimately it just took longer to change modes and find exactly which function you were using than to actually just use a keyboard? The Torbox Neo is different. The product design team meeting must have gone a bit like this. What do people want? A keyboard, but smaller. What buttons should it have? Lots. Lots of buttons. Should we put a jog dial on it? How about three jog dials in three different form factors? One standard jog dial that clicks in the middle, one rotating knob that clicks in the middle, and one notched scroll wheel so you can feel exactly how many times you input each individual shortcut. That clicks in the middle. On paper then, the Torbox Neo is a dream come true, not just for digital artists, but in fact, anyone who would usually use a keyboard for repetitive tasks. At 11.6 centimeters across, it sits considerably closer to your drawing tablet than a regular keyboard could, and with three separate dials, you can finally have instant access to common shortcuts like zoom, brush size, and rotation, all with only one hand. There's no need to search through switchable modes, and even more importantly, no need to check what mode the dial was previously set to. Sounds amazing, right? But it gets better. Just a quick disclaimer here, Torbox Tech did send this product to me for the purposes of making this video, but I'm under no obligations to say anything specific. All opinions in this video are entirely my own. Looking at the Torbox Neo, you're probably already coming up with all sorts of ideas for how you might use all of the buttons on this device or these knobs and these dials, but the best feature is actually hidden in the software. You see, when you use a keyboard for shortcuts, you usually set functions like B for brush or P for pencil. Then when you want even more functions, you use what's known as modifier keys like Control, Shift, or Alt. Control, C, Shift, Space, and so on. Now you can, of course, set the Torbox Neo to do something similar, but unlike a regular keyboard, you're not limited to something primitive like Control, C, and Control, C. You can set one of them to be Shift, Space, another one to be Control, Space, and then pressing them together can be something entirely different altogether, like Alt F4. Ah. Okay, well, maybe not that particular shortcut. Before we get to actually drawing with the Torbox Neo then, let's have a look at what comes in the box. You get a quick start guide, which you can read if you want to, but I didn't. Safety instructions, but I'll summarize them for you now. Don't eat it, don't throw it, and don't use it to hit anyone on the head. Then you get the Torbox Neo itself, which on the surface is actually a pretty boring looking box, which has a molded shape for no apparent reason because the base is flat. So using it handheld wouldn't really work that well. The rounded edges are sort of nice though because it sits 4.4 centimeters high and sharper edges would have cut into your hands. So that's a plus. As for the buttons, you have four large buttons known as the prime section, which can be double clicked or used in combination with each other. And six smaller buttons known as the kit section, which can be used alone or combined with the prime section. The kit section is further divided into an easy to remember D-pad and two more buttons, which are side by side. And let's face it, destined to be undo and redo. Why would you set them to be anything else? Next you have the three dials. The knob and dial rotate smoothly while the scroll wheel is what you'd expect from a notched mouse wheel, giving you a noticeable bump when you roll up or down on it. All three dials can be assigned two functions for rolling in each direction, and as mentioned before, they can all be clicked in the middle by pressing down for a third function. The dial is the simplest of the three with scroll left, scroll right, and click, while the knob and scroll wheel functions can be modified by the four prime keys for a total of 10 rotation functions each, plus the click. Then, last but not least, there's this mysterious tour button in the middle, originally set up to open the guide menu or the floating D-pad HUD, but fortunately, just like the rest of the kit section, you can set it to any other shortcut you like. Having so many buttons, knobs, and dials is all well and good, but plenty of other devices have tried and failed to replace the humble keyboard, and the reason is keyboards come in all shapes and sizes, they're generally quite cheap by comparison, and the truth is, 
Most software is already designed to work with the keyboard for most of their shortcuts. So where devices like the Griffin PowerMate, Wacom Express Key Remote, or the Clip Studio TabMate ultimately fall short at being what digital artists really need, does the Torbox Neo have what it takes to replace the keyboard and pen display setup? Let's find out with a waifu test. I mean a drawing test. Now I'm not going to lie to you, when I first saw the Toolbox Neo, I was prepared to say it's a simple box of stock parts that's been nailed together and marketed to digital artists who think they want dials for everything but ultimately don't need it, don't want it, and are probably going to go back to using a keyboard anyway. But I couldn't have been more wrong. The first time you plug it in and use it, the black rubberized texture actually feels really nice to touch, which is a good thing considering how many hundreds of hours you're likely to be resting your hand on it. That being said, it is a greasy fingerprint magnet, and it's fair to say that we digital artists are ridiculously OCD, so getting past that might be quite the hurdle. But once you have the software installed, the Torbox can finally show you what it's all about. Now then, let's talk about the dials. For all the reasons I mentioned before, dials have always always been overpromise, underdeliver when it comes to digital art, but the Torbox gets around this in a few crucial ways. First of all, they're physical. That means they instantly feel easier and more precise to use, but more importantly, when you lift a finger off a physical dial, it doesn't change the input. Anyone who's tried to precisely turn a touch-sensitive dial knows all too well that it's the moment you lift off the touch panel that the value slightly changes. Usually very frustrating, but not so with the Torbox's physical dials. Then there's the fact that there are not one, not two, but three dials, and they're all in different positions, with different shapes to account for any kind of application. Need more precision? Use the large diameter flat jog dial. Need to roll a dial from the side? Use the knob in the center. Need to cycle through a list of brushes or a layer palette and stop exactly three options down? Use the notched scroll wheel. And if that wasn't good enough, the knob and scroll wheel can be clicked in for related functions. Things like toggling a layer on and off to double check that you're editing the correct one out of potentially hundreds of layers, folders, or adjustment filters. Now I'd love to move on from the dials, but in fact there's more. Where usually you'd switch between three different modes on a single touch ring, like on the Wacom Express Key Remote, the knob and scroll wheel on the Torbox can be used with modifier keys. So not only are all the dials positioned separately on the device, but using any of the four prime keys you can swap temporarily to different functions that you can commit to muscle memory, rather than having to check the device or on-screen display visually. This means you're rarely distracted from the actual task of drawing or video editing or whatever it is you're working on. The joke here, however, is that I've hated poorly functioning touch-sensitive dials for years, and so I actually set the toolbox to do what I normally use shortcut keys on my pen display to do. Instead of zooming into wherever the cursor was on screen with the dial, I hold control space to activate the zoom tool and then drag the cursor left and right to do the zooming in and out. And the same goes for rotate and brush size. So of the three dials, I only actually use two of them and without modifier keys. Just the notched scroll wheel for going up and down the layer palette and the flat dial for brush size control. To my surprise though, the dials worked so well for changing the brush size that I stopped doing it my old way and switched to using the dial. Now that we've covered the dials, we can finally get to talking about the rest of the buttons on the Torbox Neo. Again, out of sheer habit, I set my shortcuts so that the easiest buttons to press were my four main operations. This means that instead of using the prime keys as modifiers like shift and control, I had them set as baked in shortcuts. From left to right, you have the side, top, tall and short buttons, which I set to rotate, zoom, move, and brush size, all of them basically acting as a way to modify the behavior of the pen. But this is where the Torbox software really unlocks the power of the Torbox Neo. Although you'd expect that clicking the side button and the tall button would activate shift space and space and result in just a rotate command, I had it set to reset the canvas rotation which I set in Clip Studio as shift R. Similarly for the top button and move button, you might expect it to input control space and space to do a simple zoom command. But instead, I set it as control zero, a completely different command that resets the zoom to fit the whole canvas on screen. Now, if you're watching this video and thinking, that's not how I would set up my Torbox Neo, I wouldn't have that dial do this and I wouldn't have those buttons do that, that's entirely the point. You can set this thing up and customize it for your own personal setup, but with all the benefits of momentary dials and without some of the limitations of a standard modifier switch system that you would find on a keyboard where you have to hold shift or hold control to get certain button combinations. Like I mentioned before, I set the smaller keys C1 and C2 to be undo and redo. And for the D-pad, I thought the keys were a little too small for modifier type shortcuts. So instead, I set them to select the most common drawing tools, eraser, pen and pencil, brushes, and the selection wand. And since the D-pad can also be used in combination with the prime keys, I use the side button to set the D-pad as momentary shortcuts for related functions like clear and deselect. 
As for the drawing experience itself, I really found very little to fault on the Torbox Neo, and for the most part I was frequently surprised at all the attention to detail they'd put into the software that allows it to be customised and go beyond a regular keyboard. I used the dials more than I expected, the buttons are actually quieter than my mouse, the notched scroll wheel meant I could precisely select exactly the layer I was aiming for, almost every button or dial can be modified to perform a related or even a completely different function, and actually even after using it for multiple days and many hours on end, I never developed any awkward wrist pain. As for my illustration, the reason I spent so many more hours testing the toolbox than I expected was because I simply couldn't decide what to draw, and even when I did, I couldn't get it to look right. That's what I get for not practicing frequently and only drawing when a YouTube video requires it. I do have some criticisms of the Torbox Neo, but none of them are really to do with the execution of the product. I think what they've tried to make seems to work quite well. My main gripes are really with the actual fundamental design of this thing. Are you supposed to use it with your hand over it, or is the idea of this rotary knob in the middle that you hold your hand to the side of it, and it's, it's not very clear how you're supposed to use it, and I guess because of the, the side button, they don't actually want your hand like this, they kind of want your hand like off to the side like this, so that your finger is doing this, and you've got the side button but I don't think that really justifies having it being this thick. I really feel like you could have got just as much much functionality if this thing had been lower profile. And if, you, and if they're not going to make it low profile, they could at least build in some kind of wrist rest or something. And my other criticism is really just the fact that it's a desk type product instead of a handheld product. Now I understand that in most cases people are sitting at their workstation doing their big video edit it, ed, edit it? edits with their left hand on the tour box and the right hand on the mouse or their right hand on their pen, but I just feel like a whole lot of people who like to draw like to do it in comfortable surroundings like lying around in front of the TV or going to a nice cafe. I really can't help but wonder what would it be like if there was a tour box that was actually handheld? Now you can see, you can't really use this handheld because once you hold it in one hand, you lose access to pretty much all of the buttons. I guess what I really want is something that's like a Clip Studio Tab Mate, which you can hold in one hand, but it takes advantage of all your fingers so that you could have knobs, dials, sliders, buttons, and modifier keys, and basically, all of this functionality, but it's something that's handheld. Well, that's it for my review of the Torbox Neo. Basically, I think it's a very capable device, and if I'm always in front of my computer sitting at a desk, or I'm sitting at a table, or maybe I'm going to a cafe that has tables, this thing is really, really hard to beat. It's weighty, it feels like it's built solidly, it doesn't slide around on the desk. I like the concept of being able to like curl your hand around and use this dial here, but also roll things around with my thumb, or I can hold down my thumb to press buttons on the left here and the dials, or I can hold down the side button and then use my thumb to press buttons on the D-pad. A lot of it just makes perfect sense, but I really do feel that maybe it's aimed more at people who are definitely going to be in desktop situations, and I just feel like artists are often not always in a situation where they've got a desk, like they just want to be, you know, on their comfy chairs in front of the TV, sketching out a picture with one hand on the handheld device, basically. So it's not really that the tour box is at fault, it's just that I feel like I would love to see like a version 2, or I guess if this is version 2, like a version 3, some kind of handheld version of the tour box Neo Neo, the tour box Neo Tokyo. Torbox Neo Classicism, I, I don't know, something new. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you liked what you saw, definitely subscribe to the channel. Plenty more videos and reviews coming up in the future. And leave a comment below if there's something you'd like to say, maybe a feature or a potential use case for the Torbox Neo that I didn't even come up with. Let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like on the video. And until the next Nihongo Gamer video, I'll see you around.